dialing in medical help from Mars. We'll show you how training is already underway for future manned missions to the Red Planet, where medical attention could be a phone call away. Good to see you back on Daily Planet's Mars Week. I'm Kim Jake Tiani. And I'm Jay Ingram. In light of the fact that a manned mission to space is being planned, before the break we had a look at just some of the hazards of sending humans into space in the future. Hmm, but even if they don't have to worry about aborting the mission after its launch, Jay, and even if they do survive the belt of debris that could be disastrous if it struck a manned spacecraft, other hurdles, in our opinion, do exist. That's right. If humans ever do make it to the Red Planet, what happens if one of the astronauts needs urgent medical help? Who do you call? Maybe the person in this next story would be a good first try. Okay, sir. It's breathing really quickly, and, um, and uh, it seems like, is, does this hurt? Damien McDonald has seen a lot of trauma in his career as a flight okay. surgeon and emergency physician. There's, there's these big veins on both sides of his, his, his trachea, but I can't tell if it's pushed to the side. Normally, he works alongside other doctors, but today he's the only doctor on Devon Island, a place so far from home it might as well be Mars. In fact, that's the idea. Devon Island is a stand-in for Mars what space scientists call an analog environment. So one of the strengths of these uh, analog environments is the ability to simulate medical care far away from home and far away from civilization. Get on the and get and the this operation. is a simulated emergency. Jeff, could you get me the, the IV kit from the red bag? And, and you want me to do what to his chest now? One more time, and truly has no air entry on the left chest. Damien McDonald is conducting this trial for the Canadian Space Agency. He okay, wants to find ways for non-specialists right to deliver hands-on medical care in really remote environments, whether they're in the Canadian Arctic or outer space. So for this experiment, the Devon Island team is linked up via satellite with two specialists thousands of kilometers away in Calgary, Dr. Doug Hamilton and Dr. Andrew Kirkpatrick. Find his collarbone. Well, you know what? Could you just walk me through it here? Can you see what I'm doing? That's a... I believe so, but that's, I, I, I'm going to guide you. Grant, the designated victim, isn't the only one role-playing. Dr. McDonald himself is playing a role, that of a family physician or a medical officer on a space mission with only basic training, someone who needs guidance. I just want you to put it in until you feel yourself pop in. Okay. Uh, okay, there's a rush of air. Yeah, some air came out. That's perfect. The guidance right. here that's, is that's live. But in a yeah. real-life medical emergency on Mars, a live voice from Calgary yeah. Foothills Hospital might be impossible. There is the ability to do telemedicine and so-called store and forward technology where you record medical images, sound files, or other information and forward it to a specialist for interpretation. With a delay of several minutes from Mars, astronauts there would have to store, then forward images to Earth. But astronauts on the moon could send images and enjoy voice transmission in real time. The time delay wouldn't be much greater than it is here, a mere four seconds. And there are plenty of great images streaming live to Calgary. That's because the Canadian Space Agency has managed to ship an ultrasound machine up to Devon Island. Could you just verify my hand position in the video image, Dr. Kirkpatrick? And can you move this shirt up a little bit? Okay, yeah, your hand position is perfect. We used an ultrasound machine designed in Canada that's able to stream its images through the internet to a computer remotely and is able to be controlled remotely by a specialist in a remote location. The doctors in Calgary are adjusting the images Damien sends at their end. Talk about remote control. Okay. This is a Canadian first. But is this good enough for the heart that I'm showing you? This is very good right now to tell us he doesn't have blood around the heart. The main advantage of this particular setup is that the provider operating the ultrasound machine on site does not need to be highly skilled. If he or she were a crew medical officer far away from home with many other tasks that they have been trained in and memorized, they would still have been able to perform basic functions such as turn on a machine 
and hold an ultrasound probe. Can you switch to the high frequency linear probe? Uh, That's the probe that looks like a, basically a rec rectangular footprint. Wait, wait. One in your right hand. Grant yep. gets a clean bill of health. Yeah. And the experiment gets a thumbs up, too. The uh, quality of the video was much, uh, much greater than I expected. Uh, I'm very excited, and I want to take the film back to NASA and uh, show it to some of the folks that actually do this for the space program. Up till now, astronauts on the International Space Station, for example, had to be trained how to manipulate all the knobs and buttons on the ultrasound machine, in addition to all the knobs and buttons on the space station. We feel that it's a more reliable method to have the specialist on Earth control imaging devices such as this. This experiment has important implications for medicine on Earth as well. Fetal wellness exams, ruling out ectopic pregnancies, uh, dealing with motor vehicle trauma and other trauma. I think the technology is right for it to be distributed uh, in all remote locations in Canada. And that's a good prognosis for the future of telemedicine. Right, I'm positioned right now.